<clears throat> hey guys, okay, so we are going to talk about neuroscience in this lecture. And basically this is the beginning of chapter two, um, neuroscience and behavior. So this series of videos is gonna cover um, pretty much what a typical lecture would be. I just wanna make sure that we stay on track in terms of our lecture series in the syllabus. So when we start a new chapter, of course we have to cover some basic terms. Um, in neuroscience, in this particular chapter, we're talking about the scientific study of the nervous system. That is what neuroscience is. Um, but bi biological psychology is um, looking at the behavior, the relationship between behavior, bodily processes, and, sim and systems. And so we're going to talk about each of these in um, kind of a, a, a large scope as well as, as kind of what we call sort of micro level um, or um, some really, really uh, cellular level stuff. Um, you might hear biological psychology referred to as biopsych or psychobiology. Sometimes we hear it called a, a neuropsychology. Um, and so these are all sort of used interchangeably. And um, it's a very, very broad, broad field that is uh, that can be kind of looked at uh, in, in many different areas as well as a lot of overlaps in this in this biological psychology field. Um, so you can get a lot of different overlap here. Now in the neurosciences, what we see are things like um, asking questions about the difference between perception, perceptive flavors, uh, sweet and sour, what's the difference between colors like red and blue, um, what's the difference between sounds like uh, loud and soft? These are all questions that you can ask uh, in the neurosciences. You can ask, what does the brain do when you sleep or dream or meditate? What is a memory? How is it stored in the brain? Um, how does heredity influence development and how do genetics and traits play a role in personality, um, psychological disorders, um, as well as looking at abnormal brain chemistry? and how that plays into psychological disorders, um, and how do medications work in the brain, and how is it that we're able to alleviate particular disorders. All of these are things that we ask in the neurosciences, and they really do span a very, very large, uh, broad sort of spectrum of, of research. Now, when we talk about the beginnings of neuroscience, it really started with phrenology. Now, we've come today to terms with the fact that phrenology is, in fact, a pseudoscience. It's, it's kind of like a, a fake science. Um, phrenology was uh, first uh, gained popularity in, about the, in, in the 1800s, and Franz Gall was the one who really um, started this, this, um, the, the popularity of, of this uh, pseudoscience. And so essentially what was proposed is that the different areas on your skull actually correspond to um, your personality traits, um, uh, your character, um, and uh, reflected abilities that you may or may not have. So as you can see in the picture here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move to a a pointer so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So if you look at the picture here on the right, you'll see that this is a phrenology uh, uh, map, okay? Um, and so uh, as you can see here that you could kind of look at all the bumps and grooves on a person's skull. And uh, this is a map that kind of shows what we would see if you have particular series of bumps in your skull. So here, for example, is um, sort of uh, the reflectives area of the brain up here, sort of on uh, further up on your on your skull here. Um, so causality, being able to derive cause from A to B, um, you know, human nature. Uh, the back here you see morality, where you can see uh, areas where spirituality and benevolence, how kind you are, hope. Um, and so, for example, if you have a particular bump, you might be more spiritual than somebody who maybe is lacking that particular guru bump in the skull. Remember, this is outside of the brain, this is just the skull. Um, and so each of these maps that were constructed would show um, this location of different abilities, different traits, whatever it may be, based off of head shape. Now, the one 
bad thing is, is obviously it's a pseudoscience. You can get lots of different people in here and look at, you know, their, their skulls and you can see the different bumps and grooves and you're not going to find patterns of, of morality or spirituality based off of bumps and grooves. But what you can find here, which is really interesting, is that phrenology really advanced our idea of studying the brain. And it really helped think about the mind and the brain and that maybe that there are particular areas that are responsible for, for certain functions. And that is really what the, what phrenology did in terms of, of helping the neuroscience field. Um, because when you look at, um, you know, the, the actual brain, not the skull, but you look at the actual brain, there are some areas that we have devoted strictly to particular function, for example, language. And if you have damage to that area in the brain, you may lose language function. So it's, it's definitely give us, given us some good information and uh, put us in the right direction in terms of studying the brain. But of course, it is not useful as an actual science. So, um, the next slide uh, here, we're talking about uh, a neuron. So we've talked a little bit about this before. Um, and we talked about this in terms of um, looking at, we've, we've talked about looking at memory and we talked about looking at the brain a little bit, but here, this is where we really get into the micro level here. Now, a neuron is a singular cell. It's a specialized cell, nerve cell that's in the brain, and it communicates inside of itself electrically, and then it communicates from cell to cell chemically. And we're going to talk more about that here in a few minutes. Um, we use uh, this picture right here as sort of a basic neuron. This is an example of a bipolar neuron. Um, and this is what we use a lot of times to teach. But if you ever take biopsychology or human neuropsychology, you're going to learn that we teach this in a very simple way. Um, but it is much, much more um, complex. And even though we kind of give you this idea that you know, oh, this is the way that it is, and this is kind of what we know. What you'll find out is, is in more, more complicated, more um, uh, advanced classes that this is a sort of a simplistic way to look at it, but it's the easiest way to teach it from the basic building blocks. And then we can kind of move from there in terms of getting more complex. So there are three basic components to most neurons. So I'll, I'll use the word, it depends, and most a lot. But um, you know, this is just for teaching the basics. So most neurons have these three basic components. We have the cell body, which is also referred to as the soma, um, the dendrites, and the axon. Okay. So the, here, if we're looking at this particular bipolar cell, this area right here would be considered the soma or the cell body. And that contains the cell's machinery. It contains the nucleus and the chromosomes and the instructions that the cell needs to have in order to function properly. Here coming out are what we refer to as dendrites. And these can connect to other cells. And so they receive uh, information from, from other cells. Okay. Um, and so the connections between cell to cell actually aren't physical connections, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but they're very, very close. And so they can communicate from cell to cell. So the dendrites usually receive information from another cell. And dendrite, the, the stem word, uh, the root word dendro actually means tree branch. So it looks almost like tree branches coming out. Now, this long part right here is called the axon. And this is important for carrying messages um, from the cell body down to the bottom area of the neuron. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Now, another thing that, uh, that I want to mention about the cell body is that it does contain, um, it does contain the uh, energy stores, uh, provides uh, nutrients and energy and process all that so that the cell can actually survive um, and, and live to... Uh, do its job. Okay, so <clears throat> there are three basic neurons that we're going to talk about in this class. We have the sensory neurons, which is important for communicating um, information from outside, so from the environment, to the central nervous system. And the central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord, okay? So 
uh, the motor neurons communicate information from the central nervous system to muscles to tell the muscles do they need to contract, do they need to move, what do they need to do. And the inner neurons really work to communicate from one neuron to the next. And so as you can see here, the purple part indicates the dendrites. So here you can see dendrites here, dendrites here, dendrites here, and dendrites here and here. And then you can see the cell body is the green here. So each one looks a little bit different, but each contains three basic components. And then the axon here, okay, you can see unipolar versus bipolar cells, okay. And so essentially this is uh, a demonstration of many of the different kinds of neurons that we have um, and what they look like. They're all a little different um, and uh, they all look a little different, but they um, really serve the same basic function and that's communication, whether it's uh, within a particular neuron or um, between them. So the um, this is a really good slide to see really the anatomy of a neuron. So here we have again um, the uh, the soma or the cell body here. Okay, it contains, it contains the cell's machinery and the DNA. Inside of that, you see the nucleus, which contains the chromosomes the dendrites coming out and they receive information from other cells. So another cell would actually be, and I can actually um, go ahead and kind of show you how this would look. Um, so this would be, for example, this is a dendrite here. So this would be, you can see, it's, it shows you right here, another cell that's actually attached to it, okay? So these would be, actually the ends of that other neuron, and this would be the axon of another neuron, okay? And so as you can see, each one of these is connected to the next, which is connected to the next. So this cell right here, this is its axon, just like this is an axon right here, okay? And this particular axon here is actually covered in what we refer to as myelin sheath. Now myelin sheath um, are fatty deposits that allow for greater conduction. And so that greater conduction speeds up this uh, uh, cell's message and also allows for um, uh, proper, um, I've just lost my word, um, insulation. So kind of like how you would see an electrical wire covered by, in, by insulation, it's the same exact thing with the neuron. It needs to be insulated. Now, what you'll see here is that they're, it's wrapped. It's actually wrapped, this, this uh, fatty uh, material is actually wrapped around the axon here. And so if you look, there are little gaps here. And when an electrical message starts in right here, which we refer to as the axon hillock, okay? When a message, uh, when electrical impulse starts, what it does is it actually jumps from uh, the nodes of Ranvier, okay, down the axon, Okay, all the way down to what we refer to as the terminal area. And here we refer to these as the terminal boutons. Um, it, 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 some people say buttons. <laughs> I think boutons a little pretentious, but that is the end point of the neuron. And so at this point, there might be a neuron over here. Okay, here's the, the, cell the nucleus and cell body. And maybe we have some dendrites coming off of here. And maybe we have a dendrite connection to this particular terminal bouton or this particular terminal bouton. So this is a dendrite coming from one cell. And we have an axon here. And then we have the terminal uh, area boutons from this particular cell. So this is kind of the basic structure of uh, a neuron, basic anatomy. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move to the next video and that way you guys can kind of get this piece by piece. And if you, uh, need to take a break, you can do that between videos. So uh, tune in to the next video where we're going to resume about the resting state of a neuron.